Okay, geometry class, we're going to be taking a look at angle relationships. Okay, we're going to start with part one, which requires no parallel lines, meaning these are always true, regardless of if there's parallel lines in the problem. Okay, so first of all, the key is to determine which relationship is happening um, and use that to our advantage. So there are going to be a series of them. The first one is complementary angles, supplementary angles, vertical angles. We're going to talk about those three today and then in addition to that we're also going to be talking about corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, and alternate exterior angles. Um, and these are all just pairs of angles, meaning there's two, um, that relate to lines. Um, we already know some stuff about triangles. We're going to learn more about triangles. We're also going to learn about angles inside of circles. But for right now, we're talking about these series of angles. Um, specifically, as I said before, um, in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at these three right there. Okay, to start off, um, basically in geometry, there's a few very common um, things that happen. So there's 90 degree angles, which are right angles. Okay, so we call them right angles. Um, they're denoted, of course, by the way you know it's a right angle is to have a little 90 degree mark in there. Without that, you can't just assume. Okay, in addition to that, we also have 180 degree angles, which are a straight line. And a 360 degree angle, which is something that goes all the way around a straight line, making a circle. Um, one thing that you can assume in geometry, as we said before, is that straight lines are straight lines. It would just be too much if every time there was a straight line you had to think, is it actually curved? So one of the things that we do assume in what we call Euclidean two-dimensional geometry is that straight lines are straight lines as they appear. Okay, um, and then the fourth one we have is we have congruent angles, so basically angles that are equal to each other. So because of this, when we're talking about things, there's really only a few possible things that come up. Either you get a pair of angles that are equal to each other, meaning you know, you have an angle here and an angle here, and they're equal to each other, and you're going to set up a problem and solve it. Or it could also be that you have uh, two angles that add up to a third angle. That would be something like, again, you have you know, two angles that make a vertical um, equal congruent angle to another. You can have two angles that add up to 90, or you can have two angles that add up to 180. We don't usually have angles that add up to 360. Um, it could be something like a circle, uh, but that's a very uncommon problem in geometry. Usually these four are the occurrences that we see the most often. Okay, so we're gonna, tar tar we're gonna start off with supplementary angles. So first of all, the definition is a pair of angles whose sum is 180 degrees meaning the angles make a straight line. So I like to emphasize the S and the S. So S supplementary is for straight line. That seems to help me remember it. Um, you know, whatever you want to do to help you remember that a straight line is supplementary, and so that's 180 degrees. Memorizing them gets tough because things like corresponding and complementary and supplementary, they just get kind of messed up and jumbled in your head. So you want to have some way to kind of keep, the, keep them memorized. Okay, so we're going to look at some examples. Um, first of all, here's an example. As you can see, there are two angles, okay, one and two, and the sum of those two angles, if you add it together, is 180 degrees. Okay. Similarly, these two angles are supplementary because they add up to 180. There's a pair of them, um, even though they don't connect to make a straight line. So you could see either, either of those sources. You could say that those two are supplementary and try to find one of them, or they could be connected to a straight line, which automatically means those two angles would be supplementary. We're going to take a look at a sample problem. Um, we're going to do it in the form of a proof, um, and later we'll look at some just more straightforward problems, just so you get that practice of proofs. Okay, so in this example, we're going to try to prove that uh, W is equal to 23 degrees. I've already told you, um, you know, that it is equal to 23. You're just trying to prove it. Uh, first of all, anytime you do a problem like this, you need to think about what type of problem is this. When you see that straight line, okay, again, remembering S is for straight line, um, therefore, it means it's a supplementary problem. Supplementary problems are equal to 180 degrees. It's very important when you do a problem like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up a proof using our statement and our reason, our two-column proof. So we're going to start off with the fact that 5w plus 75 is equal to 180. How do we know that? We know that because they're supplementary angles. 
Okay, so this is how you're going to use that information, whether or not it's a proof or just reasoning and explaining what you're doing. Now we're going to subtract 75 from both sides with a subtraction postulate. And then divide by 5 with a division postulate. And we can prove, therefore, that W equals 23 QED. We've shown what we're trying to show. Okay, next we're going to look at complementary angles. So just like before with the S for straight line, here we're going to talk about complementary being C for corner. Okay, corners are always, if it makes a nice corner like that, I know corners, there's all kinds of corners, but think about corner being a, a perfect 90 degree corner. So let's look at a couple of examples. First of all, they could be connected like this, 70 and 20, that makes 90 obviously. But they could also be separate, a 40 degree angle and a 50 degree angle like that. Either way, it's a pair of angles. You may see three, stuff like that, um, but in general it's a pair. Okay, so here's a sample problem. Prove that x equals 15 degrees. Here's our problem. Okay, we've already told you x equals 15 degrees, you just have to prove it. Um, the reason I set it up into a 180 degree line like that because it'll also kind of show why, um, in fact, it does work. Every 90 degree angle, every straight line is 180. So if this is 90 right here, whatever's left over has to equal 90. Um, in order to solve this problem correctly, either I have to give you the numbers like I did up here, or I have to give you that 90 degree angle mark. I have to tell you it's 90. Otherwise, you really don't know for sure. Um, you could you know, guess on the problem, but we don't do that in geometry. We only use the information that we for sure know. So this problem is possible because of that 90 degree angle mark right there. That's the only reason we can actually solve this. So we're going to start off with our, with our proof, two column proof. Okay, we know that 2x plus 60 plus 90 equals 180. Okay, and again, I'm going very thorough. Some of you might have wanted to immediately jump into that, but you have to remember, we have to kind of figure out first that those are equal to 90 right there. Um, this is my 90, as I did before. So if you think about it, you've got 2x plus 60 plus 90. That makes a straight line. Therefore, it's 180 based on the supplementary angle. I also put the 2x plus 60 in parentheses, so I'm really talking about that whole big angle, and we're talking about a pair of angles. From there then, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 90 from both sides, subtraction postulate. Subtract 60 from both sides with a subtraction postulate, and divide by 2 with a division postulate, and get x equals 15. So, turns out we were correct. One of the things that you often will need to do as well is tell me specifically what that angle is equal to. Um, and this is something that sometimes gets confusing for students. If I ask you to prove that x equals 15 and find the measure of the angle, the measure of the angle is not x. Okay, the measure of the angle is what is this equal to right here? What is the, what is the value of that? And really what it is, is we're simply going to plug it in. 2, x is 15. 2 times 15 is 30 degrees. So I would just label that as 30 degrees. Put an equal sign in there, and that's it. Okay, that's just something that you want to think about too, because we're using x as a means to solve the problem, but I also want to know, hey, what are the degrees of that angle? You can pretty much figure that out because it's 90 and the other one's 60, but a lot of times when you do problems, it's not as straightforward as that. Okay, as we said before, the third time kind of uh, angle pair that we're going to look at is vertical angles. Vertical angles are very different than the other ones. They don't add up to something. In fact, what they are is they're equal. So a pair of angles whose sides form opposite rays. And that's a, a little bit confusing. This is the official definition. When I think about it, I think about it across an X. So when you have an X, you always have vertical angles. Um, the other thing about vertical angles is they're always equal. So starting off here, A and C are vertical. Okay, And B and D are also vertical from each other. Okay, what we want to do now is we want to kind of prove that, in fact, vertical angles are always equal to each other. They're always congruent. What we're going to do is we're going to use some of the stuff we know about supplementary angles now. So let's take a look at this example. Instead of A, B, C, D, I did 1, 2, 3, 4. And what we want to show is we want to show that 1 is congruent to 2. They're equal to each other. Okay, we could do the same thing for 3 and 4, but the proof would be exactly the same. So starting off with our proof here, we're going to use what we know. Angle 1 and angle 4 are equal to 180. Why? Because together they make that straight line right there and they're supplementary angles. Okay, now we're going to say that 2 and 4 also make 180. 
Okay, and again, the reason for that, now, so I'll use red this time, that is another straight line that is made up of that angle and that angle. Those all add up to make also a straight line. Again, supplementary. The proof is actually quite simple from there. Now all I have to do is I'm just going to go ahead and set them equal to each other based on substitution. Okay, if 1 and 4 plus 4 equals 180 and 2 and 4 make 180, then they must be equal to each other. They're equal to the same thing. That substitution also could be a, a transitive property as well. Okay, now we're going to subtract angle 4 from both sides, which is basically subtraction postulate. And we end it with saying if the two angles are equal, then they must be congruent based on the property of congruence. So that shows, basically, I know it's a little, a little bit weird to do an proof, but what it's showing is it doesn't matter what 1 and 2 or 3 or 4 are. The angles across from each other will always be equal because they make straight lines together. They share this angle. So, for example, if I look at angle 3 as well, 1 and 3 make a straight line, but so do 2 and 3. Well, 3 didn't change. 3 stayed the same in both of those problems. So that would mean if they add up to 180, they have to be the same. Otherwise, you get different things. If this, for example, was 110 and this was 120 or something like that, how would they add with 3 to get 180 each time? 3 would have to be different in each case, and that just doesn't make sense. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at an example of vertical angles, as well as supplementary and complementary. So in general, I'm not going to give you what the problem is. You're going to have to figure it out. Uh, you're going to get the problem. You have to figure out which of these three do I use? Do they add up to 90? Do they add up to 180? Or are they equal to each other? Okay, so first off, let's determine what type of problem it is. So, you know, you pause it for a second. I want you to think, is it a supplementary, complementary, or vertical angle problem? Okay, it turns out it is a supplementary problem. Remember, S in supplementary is for straight line. Okay, so once we determine that it's supplementary, that means we're going to be setting it equal to 180. That's kind of the process you want to go through. You want to decide, are they equal to each other? Do they add up to 90? Or do they add up to 180? That's it. Those are basically the three things that happen. Um, there could be three angles that add up to 180 or something like that. But in general, that's all you have to worry about. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take those two things and we're going to add them up to 180. You can see the 2x plus 3 is the right angle and the 173 is the left angle. I wrote them in the order I did because I like to have the x's on the left. Doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to combine like terms and stuff like that, but that's the way I like to set it up. Now I'm going to combine like terms, subtract 140 from both sides, and divide by 2. And as you see, I get that x equals 20. Notice at the top it says determine the value of x and the angle. Okay, I didn't. I, the answer is not 20. 170, 137 plus 20 is not 180. That doesn't work. I have to now plug that 20 back in to figure out what the angle itself is. So that means I'm going to take that 2x plus 3, and I'm going to replace x with 20, and I'm just going to simplify. 2 times 20 is 40, 40 plus 3 is 43. It's not a tough thing to do. Okay, it's pretty quick actually. That's an easy way to label it right there. But um, something that confuses people sometimes. So I want to make sure we really emphasize that that's something you have to be able to do. We're going to look at a second example now. Okay, so again, first thing you're going to do, pause the video, think for a second. Look at your notes if you need to, but think. Is this a supplementary, complementary, or vertical angle problem, meaning are they going to be added to 180, added to 90, or equal to each other? So pause it, figure that out, hit play when you think you got it. All right, it turns out these are vertical angles. You could tell because they're across each other from the x. By that I mean, you see the x here very obviously. If you look straight across, those are where your two angles are. Okay? So you might want to try to pause it and see if you can solve the whole problem on your own. Um, but if not, just uh, you know, let it keep playing. But uh, it's, you're going to have to do problems like these on your own as well, so it's good to kind of do that practice. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to set it up. I'm setting it up in the same order that they are up there. It doesn't matter. I could switch them around. I like the larger x to be on the left side anyways because that allows me to, when I subtract, have a positive number and have my x on the left side instead of having a negative number on the left side or uh, x on the right side. Remember that you're allowed to flip these back and forth. Um, again, the transitive property allows you to do that. So now we're going to go ahead and subtract 2x from both sides, add 4 degrees to both sides, and divide by 3, which gives me x equals 15. Now what we're going to do is we need to actually figure out the value of the angle itself. And this is also a really great way to check. I'm going to take whichever one of those looks easier, 
to me 5x minus 4 does. Doesn't really matter. I just didn't want to add 41 to something. And I'm going to plug in 15. 5 times 15 is, not all at once, 75. 75 minus 4 is 71. And it's okay if you need to write out you know, extra steps in between there. Okay, what that means is that means that this is 71 degrees. A really great way to check your work right now is to plug it into the other side as well. Because if it works in both sides and you get 71 for both of them, you know you've got the right answer. So I'm going to go ahead and just really quickly off to the side here. It's not absolutely necessary, but again, those of you that check your answer will tend to do better. Um, so it's going to be 2 times 15 plus 41. That makes 30 plus 41, which is in fact 71. So as you can see, we got the right answer. I would label both of these as 71, just to be thorough, make sure my teacher knows I know what I'm doing, and move on from there. Okay, third example. Determine the value of x and the angle. Should be angles, right? We've got two different angles here. So first of all, determine what type of problem this is. Okay, it turns out it's actually a complementary problem. Um, we do have an, a whole line, okay, which makes 180. But in this case, because we know that that left one is, is uh, 90, then we know the right one would have to be 90 as well to make a straight line. So really, we're looking at a complementary angle problem. Given that, I know it's going to add up to 90. Okay, This is why I think about that step first. I say, what type of problem is it? Complementary. OK, that means 90. Corner, complementary, C for corner. Um, and I go from there. Now I'm going to add those two up to equal it. Doesn't matter which one you put first. Combine like terms, I'm going to get 4x plus 6x, which makes 10 and 7 plus 3, which also makes 10. Subtracting 10 from both sides, I get 80. And dividing by 10, I get 8 degrees. So now x is equal to 8 degrees. In order to figure out the measure of the angle, though, I have to go one step further, and I have to go ahead and plug it in. So I'm going to have to do that twice, because I have two different angles here. So um, first I'm going to do is I'm going to take 4 times 8, which is 32. 32 plus 7 is 39. Then on the other one, I'm going to replace x with 8 again. 6 times 8 is 48. 48 plus 3 is 51. The great thing again about doing this is now I can go ahead and add these together and make sure that it does in fact equal 90 degrees, which it does. Okay, and that's just a great way to check my answer as well. If I got something different, I got 120 degrees or I got 17 degrees, I know I did something wrong in one of these steps right here or possibly I set the problem up wrong to begin with. So that's the last example for these. Um, there's obviously going to be a lot of practice in class as well as possibly on the computer. Um, just make sure you fill out the form below um, for the video. And uh, you know it is a short video, so maybe rewatch some of it if it doesn't make sense to you. Um, we'll be doing practice in class tomorrow to make sure that you understand all the steps.